What's up guys, I'm Andre from Markets and Data. Nice to see you again. So don't worry about me. Um, I didn't really get ran over earlier and my computer is totally fine. So I wanted to show what object-oriented programming was not and that is not jamming random objects in inside your computer to try to j digitalize them. Well, object-oriented programming is, to me, is a form of storytelling, similar to what a writer would do when they're writing a book and writing about characters and the setting and allowing everyone to interact amongst each other inside the story. So object-oriented programming is the same way, and where you, as the programmer, you would write the objects and allow them to interact amongst each other. So a simple example of that would be a train object inside of the program, where the train I don't know if you can hear the train right now, but the train is coming in the background. So the train would be represented in code and you would basically give it uh, methods or functions that the train would be able to perform over uh, its program. So in my opinion, that is also a way easier way of storytelling because you, you're the creator and you don't have to jam objects inside your computer to make them exist inside of that digital space. What you can do is you can just type up a few lines of code, very simple, plain English, and I'll represent your object that way. So today that is really what I want to show you. I want to give you an example of a simple train that I'm going to program for you uh, step by step and show you how programming is no different than uh, storytelling. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a train class. So instead of getting ran over by the train like earlier, we're going to forget getting ran over and we're going to put the train inside of the computer by just telling the computer that we want to represent the train. So we're going to represent it via Python and use Python to basically bring our ideas forward. So to get started, what we have to do is we're going to just make a plain text file and name it trains.py. Um, then after we did do that, we're going to define what type of class we want to make. So the class and object are both the same thing and they will be represented inside of the computer uh, the same. So to do this, we're going to just type in class and train. That's it. So now that we have the class defined, what we need to do is we're going to put some variables inside. So those variables will be the stops that the train is going to, uh, what stop it's on currently, and whether it's running forward or reverse on the train track. So to do this, we're going to type in def and init to tell the interpreter what is inside the, the train itself. So then we're going to type in self and then stops. All right, that's it. And now we're going to define what those things are inside the train so the interpreter knows what's going on. So we're going to type in self stops equal to stop. And then self dot stop number equal to zero because the train will start off at stop zero whenever it initially gets going. And then we need to specify whether the train will be running in reverse or not. And for now, we're going to say it, that will be false since the train will be starting off at train station zero, and then it will be going forward from there every single time. So that's pretty much it for defining the types of variables that are inside the train. Um, now the Python interpreter will know what, what it can play with what things to keep track of. I guess an example would be similar to your wallet. The things that you have inside your wallet would be your credit card, uh, some cash, maybe an ID. And those things, you know what's inside of that, so you're able to interact with it. So this is basically the same principle that we're using. Now that we have a train setting here, the train is not really doing much, so we need to give it some specific tasks it's able to do. Uh, just as a person is able to walk, we're going to say that the train here is able to, to drive from one stop to the next. So to do this, we're going to uh, add a method. A method is basically a verb for the train, like jump, um, that Python is able to read and then say that 
this object is able to perform these tasks. So to drive to the next station, we're going to say def drive to next stop. And we're going to say that the task will be performed by itself. So here is where programming gets fun because programming is also simultaneously like a little puzzle that you're trying to solve. So here we need to program an on and off switch for the train to tell the train whether or not it's going to be running on the track forward or backward. So since we already have our reverse variable here, all we have to do is just give it some instructions on what to do in each situation. So to do this, we're going to give it an if statement. So we'll do if self stop number plus one is equal to the length of the total stops and then we're going to say that self dot reverse equal to true so in this statement, we're just saying that if the train gets all the way to the end of the track that it's running on, then the switch for reverse will be flipped from false to true. So then our program will know that instead of counting forward on the stops that the train is making, it will be counting backwards. So then the same thing for whenever the train is running on the reverse side of the track, whenever it hits the beginning or stop zero then it will need to know that the train needs to start running back and uh, going forward so uh, to do this we're just going to add another if statement so if dot self dot stop number is equal to zero then we're going to say self dot reverse is equal to false Cool, that's it. So these are some logic statements saying that when the train hits either the front or the back of the track, then it will just flip the way it's counting the stop numbers and go from there. So then the next thing to do would be to program in how the train will be advancing the stops. So we're going to just quickly comment that we're going to be programming that to make it a little simpler for us to understand what's going on in the code when we're just looking over it um, quickly after we've come back to it from a while. So then we're going to say if self dot reverse is equal to false, then we're going to uh, drive to the next stop. And to do this, we're going to say self dot stop number plus or equal to one. All right, nice. And then next, we're going to say if the train is running on the reverse side of the track, then we're going to subtract the stop numbers. And it's going to be the same principle as the previous if statement. So it's going to be if self dot reverse is equal to true, then it's going to just subtract the, the stop numbers. minus equal to one. Awesome. So that's pretty much it for our train logic. Um, as you can see, we've programmed that the train is able to have the ability to run forward and backward. And then on the track, it won't be trying to run to the next station after it has reached either end of the track because we don't want the train to plow through the wall after it's at the end of the track. Finishing off this statement, we're just going to print out what the train has done at that current point in time. So let's go ahead and do that by typing in print. And just, we're going to print out what it's doing. So stopping at plus then a string. And then solve that stop. Stop number. Okay. Good stuff. And then we're just going to add a few new lines in order to make it more clear um, to read. Awesome. 
Well, so that's pretty much it for a little if statement. In order to test it, we're going to have to bring the train online. And once we bring the train online, all we have to do is just feed it the specific stop numbers that it is able to make on that track and then try to run it. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically just getting out of the train object and I'm going to instantiate a new train. Instantiating just means that you're bringing the train online and that it's becoming a live train on a specific track. So we're going to say the D, the D train is equal to the train. Uh, and I'm laughing because there is an actual D train here in New York. It runs on uh, the orange line. So let's just say that the D train today is running on, uh, I don't know, 105th Street, 96th Street, 90th Street, 81st Street, and 72nd Street. Nice. So once we figure out where the train is running, what we can do is just run our program to make sure that we have no discrepancies in the code and that uh, the Python interpreter is able to process the code properly. So it doesn't look like it is able to because we have a discrepancy here. So let's go ahead and fix this. So it just basically looks like we missed one of the equal signs here and here uh, for the true or false statement. So let's go ahead and try that again. And we're missing an S here, okay. All right, nice. So now that we fixed all our mistakes and Python stopped being picky about what we type into all the time, uh, it's a letting us run our program. Now let's go ahead and try to bring the D train over to the next stop. So currently we have the D train starting at 105th Street and then the next street would be 96th Street. So let's go ahead and test it out. We're going to type in D dot drive to next stop and once we type that in and run it we should be able to receive a message that's saying stop at da 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 uh, stop so let's go ahead and do that and as we see here the d train is running from 105th street all the way to 96th street and it's stopping there nice so that just means that we did everything correctly and that the d train is not being messed up anywhere else and that the interpreter is able to uh, decipher what's going on. So what I also like to do is just go ahead and check that the whole train will be running properly whenever it hits the end of the track and whenever it hits the front of the track to make sure that it is switching from going forward to backward and that our program that we wrote is able to uh, understand that it needs to switch from forward to reverse. So in order to do this, we can just write a simple for loop that will generate the the train stops for us a lot quicker that the train is running through. So we're going to type in for stop and range. Let's just say one through ten. So it's going to be making ten stops, and we're going to say d dot drive to next stop, and that basically should just propel our train forward uh, for ten stops. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it's broken somewhere else. And this is not a semicolon, this is a comma. Go ahead and run it. I've been programming in Java a lot, so um, there are a lot of semicolons in Java. So, um, so as we can see here, the train is running properly. So we here, it's going to 96th Street, then 90th, 81st, 72nd. And after 72nd, as we've said before, the train needs to turn around and come back. Uh, which is it's doing so it's going back to 81st 90th and so on 105th 96th so the train's just run, literally running back and forth back and forth as we specified